Hey Snack Techers, I want to give you an update on the uh, solar dashboard. So this is the completed one. I got the boards in and um, this is what it looks like. Here's the cover for it. Just took the cover off for now. But basically we got the uh, ESP board here, we've got the SD card, we've got the RS485 transceiver and then we got the uh, EP Ever, EP Solar controller here. This one is a uh, 30 amp model and um, this one uses these uh, terminal blocks. A lot of them have the RJ45 connector so you can just jump over that. Uh, and right now what I'm doing is I'm just working on it. I'm showing, going to show you the development uh, setup that I have. So what I'm doing is I don't want to have solar panels connected so I've got um, got two power supplies and this one here is uh, imitating the solar panels and I've just got that connected right to the solar panel input and then I wanted I wanted to put some load through so that I would get because uh, I was trying to debug this um, these these numbers here these uh, generation figures so right now you see it shows 0 0.02 kilowatt hour so I need to get some load in so that it would increase those numbers make sure that's working and the way I did that is um, I have to connect a battery so that I can and then connect a load to the battery but the I didn't have a battery handy so I use this power supply and basically uh, you trick it um, if you just connected a motor to the output to the battery terminal it wouldn't work because with say there's no voltage on the battery the battery's dead so you got to trick it. Basically, we connect the power supply to the motor, get the motor spinning up, then we connect the solar controller to it. Now it thinks there's a battery, and then keeps the motor going. So then I can disconnect the power supply, and it keeps running. Um, then uh, once this motor, this motor is a good load because it has some um, sustaining power. It, it sort of acts like a battery if if there's an intermittent. Uh, disconnection and so to keep it more to but, but the load is very small so in order to increase the load to get this kilowatt hour number going up because otherwise it's not going to go up need a bigger load so I have this um, this resistor thing I made a, a long time ago this is for this was for one of my early 3d printers and I just uh, it just has a bunch of power resistors and so I just connected that as well and uh, and just hook that up to the spinning motor as well and um, and now we got our load going so it's doing about 40 as you can see here doing about uh, 38 watts you can't see that yellow but it's usually yellow Let's see if I can... anyway if that's yellow it's kinda hard to see um, and uh, 38 watts and our battery voltage is very low so it's complaining but that doesn't matter and you can see our battery current our uh, photovoltaic current or photovoltaic voltage and we have a graph here I fixed up the graph a little bit um, I made all the grid lines equal I also changed the time settings um, so you can see it only puts a vertical bar on every hour and we've got the scale here color coded now so you know what you're looking at because it's helpful to know what you're looking at otherwise just a bunch of random lines not gonna help you and um, yeah, and we, for now I just have, I'll probably add the battery temperature. I've got the battery temperature probe here. That adjusts the, uh, this thing can use the battery temperature to adjust the different uh, charge points. So uh, it, the hotter the battery is, um, the uh, lower the voltage, I think. I think it's the relationship is like, uh, you can adjust it, but it's a negative 0.03. So 30 millivolts per volt per degree Celsius, or something like that. Anyway, um, just wanted to show you the setup. So, I guess I'll go into a little bit more detail with this. I'll show you how this looks. So, we disconnect that, and then there's this cover. It just pops on there, and then uh, this thing is uh, powered right through the controller, so that's no problem. Um, but for now I disconnected it because I'm powering it through my USB cable. But um, you can see these lights, the top light, the red light, is the 
uh, three volt uh, su supply so that tells you that this guy is getting power the orange light is the communication light so it tells you whether or not we're communicating oh, you see this uh, this turned off because it's doing a, a MPPT sweep so you can see maybe there it's it's doing a sweep every once in a while it does a sweep and, uh, and then it sort of spazzes out so it's not very good but I got I got my result so I can shut this down anyway um, there you go now it's back up so um, what, are, what are they saying here we got the orange light the orange light is the communication so when there's successful communication um, it's supposed to flash and if it's not flashing do something else if it's off or on and you know there's no communication then the green light is the Wi-Fi light so and you can customize the dashboard however you want to suit your needs right now it can be totally offline uh, that's my application meaning meaning this uh, this web interface is all hosted right on that ESP8266 so that you could just plug and play this with your own system if you wanna if you end up uh, putting one of these together yourself or you want to order it uh, uh, if you order it from the Snacktech site, it'll be pre-programmed with this dashboard, whatever the latest version is, and it'll be plug and play. You don't have to redo anything. And uh, the reason is, is because I've got the access point uh, selector thing going. So, okay, it's been running for a while. You can see the, the graph has uh, begun to build. It basically goes to 24 hours, and then the whole graph moves sideways as new points are added. And then you, know, you can see the kilowatt hour number has increased. And um, now I'll show you the uh, some an overview of how the code works. The code is going to be available on the uh, GitHub website. Just check in the description. And um, but I'll give you a, a quick overview. It's basically a one file project. Um, we're using the Modbus Master Library. We're using a simple timer. We're using the ESP Async Wi-Fi Manager, and we're using the ESP Async Wi-Fi uh, Async uh, Web Server. And uh, the Async Web Server works a lot better than the regular web server, so I think you'll appreciate that. It allows you to connect more than one client and have still very good performance. Um, structures here to represent the the photovoltaic and battery data as well as the uh, generation data um, then there's uh, basically we just have two functions to read using the Modbus master reading uh, the registers from the the, um, the manual will be in the description reading the registers from the from the uh, EP ever controller you can add your own, you can add, read more of the registers, no problem, but these are the ones I want to read. Uh, here's the function for reading uh, these Modbus uh, information. Um, it just manages the reading. You can see we, uh, we do the read here and here, and, uh, and then we update the, the data in the, uh, the arrays. And then these three functions um, are handled by the web server to give you the XML file that's going to be displayed on the on the on the charts. And there's one for the historical data to make the uh, graph. Then there's the current, the latest data, and the uh, gen generated uh, generate the you know the kilowatt hour data at the bottom. So there's three different XML files. Then there's a simulation simulation function that just generates some simulation data when I don't have it hooked up to the EP ever. And then there's uh, um, the generation. Uh, the most complicated one here is this one uh, because we had to use this uh, lambda function with states. But 
because it can't be generated, uh, it has to be generated on the fly and sent using uh, using a stream of uh, packets. So uh, that that's the most uh, difficult part here. And then there's the, um, this, is, this is just the not found uh, 404 response. And then there's the setup, and that just sets everything up. Uh, Arduino style sets up the Wi-Fi manager, sets up the handlers for for the web server, and then there's uh, the loop, which just has the timer run so that the timer fires. Here I here I can turn on the simulation, and I just comment that out when I'm uh, doing the simulation, and I uncomment this, and vice versa. So that's basically the code. There's and then there's the code on the uh, on the other side on the HTML side, uh, uh, let's see if I'll show you that. So basically for the HTML, um, it's sort of structured right now like this. I've got uh, three JavaScript files. These are my application JavaScript files. Uh, this one generates the gauges, this one generates the chart, and this one um, does the rest, uh, refreshing everything and so forth. Uh, then there's the uh, index HTML, and then here we have all the libraries as well as the CSS and uh, the basically the most interesting ones is this um, this uh, JavaScript file so you can see uh, basically we just set up our hand our um, callbacks to so these happen it's going to get the current data every half a second it's going to get the generated data every uh, Five minutes, and then it's gonna get the historical data, the chart data every three minutes or something. And then we got. Um, if you run this locally, you just add your ESP IP address right there. Um, you just come to it when it's running on the ESP. It's faster to prototype it locally, and uh, basically, we just got the different functions for refreshing, getting the. Um, Getting the XML files and then extracting the values out of them, and uh, it just does this once at the very beginning when it loads. And then we got our index file. So this one's very simple. It's just the HTML file. It just uh, literally sets the canvas right here for the for the graph. And then the, the gauges, it sets the divs for that, and the um, row, and the table, and, and the whatever this uh, all these uh, includes here. And we've got the style sheet, and so that's that. And what else we got? And then we got set up the gauges. Okay, here is uh, just uh, configuring the gauges, all the different parameters, you can mess with that. Um, and then there's the uh, history, the chart. You got all the buffers for the data, and then we just configure the chart, all the legends, all the little settings to make the make the chart the way we want. And change all the colors, and then we got the um, this code here just to load it at the beginning and um, that's pretty much it now I'll show you the uh, access point okay so I've made it uh, reset its uh, Wi-Fi settings so now you can see the Wi-Fi light is off and the uh, other light is also off the only light on is the red one and then we're gonna go to the to the Wi-Fi selection you can see the solar access point connect to that and then we get a, a window here, and uh, yeah, there it is, solar. Uh, so we're just going to configure the Wi-Fi, and then we can choose our network. Okay, I want to give you a quick overview of the final product. Basically, this is it. There's only one port on the front for the RS-485 from the EP Ever controller, and I did cut out the bottom here so I can plug in my focus plug in my uh, USB cable but you can also take the board out and inside 
So the lid just pops off and it's very simple construction. We have from the top, we have the um, ESP Node MCU board, V3. We got a uh, RJ45 jack, We've got three LEDs, three resistors for them. This um, TTL to RS485 converter, two jumpers. These are used for, because there's only one uh, UART on the um, UART, meaning serial port, on the ESP8266. So we have to share it with the programming of the ESP8266. So you take out these two jumpers um, for programming, and then you put them in, and then it allows it to communicate with this uh, RS485 board. Then there's a SD card adapter. Uh, the SD card is at this point not not supported in software, but it's there for future. And there's a capacitor for it. And that's pretty much it. And then there's just four screws, so screw it down. And you got yourself a solar dashboard in a box. You could just uh, double-sided tape it to wherever your solar controller is, plug in a dual-ended Ethernet cable, and you're good to go. All right. You can get just the bare PCB. It'll be on the uh, on the shop. You can get the kit. It's going to be the PCB, this thing, and all the other components in a box. You can put it together yourself. It comes with the the plastic enclosure as well, and you can put it together. That'll be a different price. Also available in the shop. And then there's the fully assembled version that you don't have to do anything. It'll be pre-programmed and everything, so you can just plug it in plug and play and that'll be a different price so just go to the shop links are in the description you can see how much it is it's gonna be very reasonable